Hello and welcome to our project of carving and painting an antique style songbird decoy. If you were with us in parts one and two, you know that we've been carving a golden winged warbler in a style of a vintage decoy, in this case a songbird decoy. So in this video we are going to be finishing the bird, we're going to be painting being a decoy, not a whole lot of real complicated or precise painting. We're making it simple in the style of a decoy. So let's get started. So our golden winged warbler has uh, a very small palette of different colors. And you'll see here that I always take my colors that I think I'm going to use. I spread them out a bit on some white paper, mix them together to see what kind of uh, other colors that I can uh, make out of my main colors. And uh, you'll see that uh, they're between the yellow and the gray, there's probably a whole host of uh, variations of uh, colors that can be made. The list uh, is on the slide of the colors that I'm using. One comment about Nimbus Gray. Nimbus Gray is a bit of a warm colored gray. If you look at the pigments used to make Nimbus Gray, you're going to see a black and a, and a white, but you're also going to see a brown and a yellow put into the mix to get you a warmish color of, uh, of gray. So if it's got yellow in it, it's going to be a good partner for the yellow that we're using in, in this bird. So. There's our list. Um, your bird should be sealed by now with some kind of a sanding sealer. And um, we're going to get on with putting a coat of white gesso. So here we are um, adding uh, the white gesso to the, to the bird all over its entire body. The gesso has been thinned down a bit with water. You don't want to be putting on one thick, thick coat because you'll end up with a whole mass of, of brush strokes that are showing. So we're probably going to be put on about uh, three to four thinned down coats. On the right hand side, you'll see where I've penciled in some of the, the uh, main patches of, of different colors. So we've got a patch of yellow, a couple of patches of yellow. Uh, and some patches of uh, quite quite black areas. So another view uh, of um, how the uh, the penciling is uh, taking place on the left hand side. You can see there's also a little bib. Reminds you of a chickadee's uh, bib. So I'm starting to use uh, the color um, black umber. It's a, a Josonia brand color. Really, it's a mix of raw umber and some black so it's not a real striking black but uh, it's a good base uh, coat for uh, getting our our main colors blocked in so here i'm continuing blocking in some of the main color patches we've got yellow on the the fore wing and in the left hand photo here you'll see that i'm holding my carving up against a mirror so that I can see both sides of the carving at the same time. This helps a lot in getting your shapes to be uh, r relatively identical. On the right hand side, you'll also see a yellow patch on the crown of this little warbler's head. And now I am uh, beginning to gray in the uh, the areas uh, look at your reference materials see where this little bird is uh, has the lightest uh, gray color so again i'm putting it in in uh, kind of blocks so this is straight uh, straight nimbus gray i also uh, i'm using nimbus gray um, underneath the the tail uh, it's a lighter shade of Nimbus Gray, so I've simply added some white to my Nimbus Gray so that I get uh, another another shading of, uh, of Nimbus Gray. So where our colors meet, the two shades, uh, what you're w wanting to do is make a bit of a ragged uh, join between them. We're going to try and blend that together uh, in uh, 
in future uh, steps of, of this bird, but a little uh, back and forth with your brush tip will help you to uh, make not a solid uh, join between the two colors, but a more of a shaded uh, gradual change from the, the lighter color to the darker gray. On the wings of the, uh, the warbler, the gray is a little a little darker. So I have done the top of the tail and the wings uh, with a darker shade of the Nimbus gray. So I've made it darker by adding a little bit of that uh, black umber color. So here's a, a couple more shots of uh, doing transitions between two colors. The bib is a fairly sharp change in color on, on the warbler. So the way that we join those together is by using uh, one of your your sharp sharpest brushes, like a number one, something like that, uh, to pull little lines of black over and into the gray, and also the reverse of that, pulling some of the gray into the black. So we're making a, a whole series of tiny little uh, little lines that uh, make it look like there's a, a nice uh, join between the colors. Next, we're going to draw in some of the feathers with our fine pointed brush using the, the blackish uh, color. You'll need to get your reference out, your pattern, and um, you can even maybe pencil in some of those lines first if you're not so good with freehand. So we're drawing in some of those main, main feathers uh, on the tail and the wings and uh, the the primary or the secondaries and tertiary feathers. On the right hand photo you'll also see that I've started putting a little dark darker gray on top of my original gray color just behind the head there. So we're going to go back and forth with those uh, different shades of gray we made. Okay, here's a good uh, photo of um, what we're doing with the, the different colors of of, uh, of gray. So you can take your um, uh, uh, your brush and uh, just draw in a whole pile of little little strokes that represent the way the feathers grow, the direction. Uh, so we're just breaking up the that original uh, slab of of gray. Um, by uh, using uh, different uh, shades of, of, uh, of the same gray and um, breaking it up. Uh, it really makes it look a, a whole lot like feathers. On the right hand one, you'll also see that I've been doing the same thing between the, the yellow of the crown and the gray at the back of the head. So I've been, I've been moving some, painting some of the gray lines into the yellow and some of the yellow lines into the gray. Here's a good example of uh, transition between different uh, colors. So you remember we had white under the tail and then the um, belly of the bird was, was gray. So I've been working back and forth, putting uh, white into the gray and gray into the white until uh, we get a nice uh, transition there. So it's a smooth transition, not a, a definite line. On the right hand side, you'll see that um, I've done a lot more of this kind of uh, transitioning between colors. I've put uh, gray into the edges of the yellow. I've put some of the, um, even the, the black wing outlines just barely showing into the yellow and uh, even a little bit of gray on top of the yellow wing patch. So the bird is um, becoming quite, um, quite blended together and that's exactly what we want without having to go into excruciating detail. Here's a view from the top. You can see that I've done a little bit of decoration to the feathers themselves. Um, have a look at the tail feathers. You'll see that I've drawn in the center quills with, with my black color. I've um, made some little splits along the feather in the direction that the barbs grow out from the center shaft of the, or the quill of the feather. I've also added uh, a little row of white lines just at the, where the, the rump feathers uh, start to, to or, or where they end on the tail. 
So here's our um, warbler, pretty much finished as far as the main painting. You'll also kind of notice that on the the secondary and tertiary feathers um, behind, so to the rear of the yellow wing patch, those feathers have a little bit of a yellow tint to them as well. And I've done this by doing what's called dry brushing. So I've taken a, a brush I, um, with rather stiff short bristles and I've put a little bit of yellow paint on them and then wipe that paint off uh, on a paper towel so that it's uh, really quite dry and then you can uh, take your brush and kind of just scrub it around over the feathers uh, a little bit just so the tiny bit of uh, of that pigment rubs off onto the the surface we're not painting here we're we're basically scrubbing a bit of color on. Be careful about scrubbing. You don't want to scrub your original paint off. So in the previous two photos, you you may have noticed that the uh, that I had cleaned the eyes all off. Uh, up to this point, I'd been just painting right over top of the eyes and not um, being too concerned about them. So here I'm opening up the eyes in this slide that you're looking at with uh, the end of a round toothpick. So I just go round and round and round, uh, opening up the eyes, uh, uh, getting it uh, into a nice, uh, not perfectly round shape, just has a very slight oval. You may find that it's going to leave a big white ring around the eye that should not be there. So you may have to get your black paint out or your gray paint out and just color that, uh, that ring that you've made uh, in the, the eye, um, the... The wood that the the wood filler that we use to to sink the eye into, you might have to just uh, color that a little bit so it uh, isn't apparent. So, on the right hand uh, photo here, we're getting ready to to add a little bit of uh, antiquishness, if there is such a word, to the carving. So this is uh, we're going to be putting a coating on top of uh, all the all the uh, work that we've done. This is kind of a a, a severe uh, process that'll make you a bit nervous but uh, uh, here's here's a way to add uh, a bit of an antiquish uh, luster or patina to your carving so what i have here is um, uh, a an amount of linseed oil and um, a tiny bit of the uh, of raw umber uh, now and and a teeny tiny little bit of phthalo green now because linseed oil is an oil based paint uh, you're going to need oil-based raw umber paint and oil-based thalo green to, to mix together. If you don't have oil-based paints on hand, you can do a similar kind of a thing by making a wash out of raw umber uh, to, to, do, to do this step. So I've mixed up my linseed oil, my raw umber and my thalo green. You do not want to put in so much thalo green that the, the paint becomes a green color. You want it to, to not really show green at, at all. So I'm, um, I'm, now I'm just uh, slathering that oil, the linseed oil onto my bird. Now you, you may be thinking that it looks like it's green, but uh, it's when it's over top of the yellow that area does have it makes it look like a greenish tint to it but uh, it's really quite a a dark brownish uh, color so um, I put uh, quite a lot over the the whole bird including the, the dowel that uh, the bird is going to be mounted with and uh, I'm letting it sit there for maybe uh, five or ten minutes to uh, sink in a little bit oil paints can go over top of acrylic paints. Remember, acrylics are water-based. So you can put oil paints over top of acrylic, but not the other way around. So that's, uh, that's an important uh, thing to remember if you're doing this sort of a thing. So after um, I've uh, wiped off uh, some of that, that uh, original uh, linseed oil uh, uh, coating that I put on. Uh, I wiped it off uh, so that it looks kind of smooth and and uh, even uh, without a whole bunch of streaks in it. So that's what you're seeing on the left hand side. So um, 
it's going to be a bit shiny for a while and, and that'll be okay. And it's going to take uh, three or four days to dry completely. So set it aside. When it uh, feels dry to the touch, then uh, you should take a, a soft towel and uh, or uh, like a piece of a t-shirt or something like that and just rub gently rub uh, the bird over uh, dulling it down a little bit so it's not quite so shiny uh, don't scrub it so hard that you're going to remove paint this is not a, a decoy version that it looks like it's been kicking around in a garage this is uh, what we call a pristine type of uh, vintage decoy where it looks like it's been painted new and ready to go out and be used. So on the right hand side that's what uh, what we end up with. Uh, a golden winged warbler and uh, good luck with uh, all your efforts. Thanks.